That's, that's something I I started a number of years ago when I found this particular photo in the Des Moines Register, and it is shows a flat car of Christmas trees being unloaded in Des Moines in 1935. It's a Duluth um, Masabi and Northern car, I believe it is. So, but you know. Uh, we're going, and I want to give you a little history lesson or a little theology, if you don't mind. The uh, Chiro, a Greek symbol you see there down in the corner, yeah, is the name of Jesus Christ, and it means the ma. Uh, and so we get Christ Mass for Christmas, celebrating the birth of Christ. So when you see the the Xmas, you notice the X there in the Chiro. That's the symbol for Christ's name. And so Christmas is Xmas. So you'll see that reference in here many times. And now I'll get off my um, pulpit and we'll move on with the show. <laughs> here is a load of Xmas trees. <laughs> in New York, uh, you can see it in early years. Um, here is a model of loading a boxcar with Christmas trees. I think Jack Ozanich did this model based upon a scene that he spotted near in Saginaw, Michigan in 1966 of a free Your comment? I don't know what that was. Okay. Well, anyway, so it, ha it has been modeled. Railroad Model Craftsman published the, this photo here. And like I said, I'm pretty sure it was Jack Ozanich, but I can't swear to it. Jack's not here anymore, so he can't rebuff me on that. So, Yes, it was Jack's layout. Thank you. I thought that, so confirm that. Good. Well, moving on, Christmas trees have been uh, around with us as far as loads, as long as railroads have been around. Here's a couple shots, one from uh, New Brunswick, Canada. The other one's from Les Leslieville, Canada, which I believe is near Toronto. And you can see it's just a, not a single car, but multiple flat cars just stacked up high with Christmas trees. And typically a coach or rider car brings up the end to um, carry the, those who are handling the loads. Here's another load. Oh, we got a West Shore Railroad boxcar hay car behind this tree. So this probably is the West Shore Railroad part of the New York Central up on the west side of the Hudson River. And those hills look like they're Hudson River Hills. So again, a string of flat cars with a coach, combine coach, it looks like I'm behind there. And a guy on the roof. Yeah, and a guy on the roof. Yep. So. And a hay car on the right. And a hay car on the right, which also helps date the photo. Because <laughs> hay cars, we're talking pre-turn of the century, probably. That and the hand car on the left. And yep. So early photos, but here's a, a more current, you know, there's a boxcar built in 1937, Canadian Pacific. This is at a place called Bear River on the Canadian Pacific, November 1950. We got a couple of fellows that brought in a truckload of Christmas trees and they're loading them. You got the tally counter down there, keeping track. And so we've got a series of photos of them as they're unloading, throwing them into the Box cars stacking them up in there. And then they're taking a break and confirming the, the count, probably so they make sure they get paid properly. So here we got another load of um, this is Canadian National mm -hmm. again, loading boxcar Christmas trees. And I'm not sure what the sign says here on the boxcar, but it might say something like Stark Brothers customers. Tree is specially cut for somebody. And here's a, you know, so again, Canada was a big source. Here's a, a string of, of cars in Chicago waiting to be unloaded and sold to the Chicago market. Notice the truss rod flat car in the front. Notice towards the rear of the train, there's a gondola loaded up with Christmas trees. So flat cars, guns, box cars were all used in this type of traffic. And it's something that we don't often think about if we're modeling and operating, but they started cutting Christmas trees the latter part of September, October, um, and up north in Canada and the northern 
uh, boundary states so that they could prepare them to, to package and ship so they'd be in the Christmas tree markets before Thanksgiving. So here we are loading. Uh, this is in uh, Edgar, Wisconsin, loading up a uh, Chicago Northwestern gun. Fellows are just walking the plank, carrying the Christmas trees up. This is in New York City. This is the Emperor Xmas tree market at the um, Erie Railroad Ferry Terminal. Photo is by George Bain. Uh, unfortunately, you can see where it was water damaged. I tried to Photoshop it best I could. To, you can see some pretty tall trees there. So probably for all the big buildings and storefronts in New York City. Here's another George Bain photo of the same area, the same tree market. Um, and yet another one with a wagon load of trees going out to probably the local neighborhood selling point. This is a, a Milwaukee flat car with, it says the first load of Christmas trees. So I don't know the date of that flat car, but it looks like something Chad Bowes could put together for us. So. Here we've got a 1937 shot of another truckload of trees being loaded into a Northern Pacific automobile box car. And then uh, here again, we got Canadian Nationalists in 1938. And notice the boxcar has been labeled for clean lading only. So Christmas trees qualified for clean lading. Um, there's something that, you know, things like newsprint and flower and things like that. So, yeah. So that, you know, your January um, newspapers may smell a little piney because of the previous load. So. Those are mighty skinny trunks. I, yes, these these were the type of Christmas trees that I can remember getting as a kid because mother never had any money and we bought the cheap ones. And mm -hmm. yeah, they were little spindly things, but that was the, the Christmas tree that we got. Apparently for a while, they allowed harvesting Christmas trees in national forests. Here's a couple of fellows with their truck load. You can see the cab of another truck there at the edge of the of the um, camera. But uh this is a, oh, it says it's a load of 800 trees. I'm not sure the mm. count, probably from the late 30s based on the truck. Here we are. Um, this is in uh, New Brunswick, uh, Newcastle, New Brunswick, Canada. But notice it's a Southern Railway boxcar that's up there loading Christmas trees for Florida. So mm. I don't know if an empty boxcar was sent up there for that purpose or if they've just happened to grab one that was in their yard that they knew they had to send south. So, but you can see the, again, the flatbed trucks lined up there and the guy inside taking trees and stacking them up. So here we were getting into the more mechanical operation. Uh, we're actually look like we're loading a flatbed truck with a conveyor. Notice how the trees have been tied with twine so that they could load and, and transport easily. The trunks are getting a little bit bigger. They're not quite as spindly. Um, here we've got a bunch of lads uh, unloading Christmas trees. This is a Northwestern boxcar. It's it very possible this is something like a Boy Scout group or a youth group of some sort, because I can remember a lot of scout troops in the Des Moines area. There several of them had Christmas tree lots where that was their main fundraiser each year was selling Christmas trees. So. Here we've got more of an automated operation with a B&O box car. They've got a machine that they're sending the trees through that are wrapping them in the netting, uh, that plastic netting, and that would keep them compact and made it easier to ship. And notice the Massey Ferguson tractor in the background with a trailer or wagon load of trees just brought in from the farm, ready to be um, wrapped and shipped, loaded. And here we are loading. These are going into a a Southern Pacific Pacific Fruit uh, Fruit Express car, again going up the conveyor with these. They look like they're tying, wrapped with twine. It's a, it's a pretty dirty box car. For those of you into weathering, look how clean the door is compared to the rest of that car. Wow, they were always like that. Were they? <laughs> <clears throat> this is an interesting one. This is a Union Pacific intermodal container. 
that they're loading again with a, a conveyor and Christmas trees. So, yeah, are these going overseas? You know, that could that's a very possible with a intermodal container. So here we are, just back to the standard truck and the Canadian National. This is up in Nova Scotia. Here's another. This is a flatbed trailer being loaded with. This is also in Nova Scotia. It says it's headed for the United States. There's a lot of trees on there. This was really interesting. Here's a pair of Milwaukee trailers on a trailer train flat car. Both of them are open top cars. One's a low sided, one's a top sided, loaded with Christmas trees. Um, which for you, you know, Milwaukee modelers, there's a, a an idea that I don't see. I don't think anybody's ever modeled that shot before. So. Here we are, you know, this is up in Wisconsin, uh, an SP boxcar, again, the conveyor, what we typically would see farmers are using to load hay, hay up into a hay mow or possibly corn into a, a grain bin or silo. Love the guy there with the cigar in his mouth, supervising. This is in Los Angeles, 1949. Uh, we got Santa Fe boxcar there and uh, not sure. I think it might be a Southern Pacific box car, but here we are unloading the Christmas trees, and you see they're loading the trucks up to take them around to the various places to where they will be sold. That's Santa Fe all the way. Is that what it says? Okay. Yeah, the first one, but it's the second one back here. I'm thinking. I don't know if that's a Southern Pacific or. But notice that this one's an automobile, a double door car. And this one very likely is too. So looking at that uh that logo just above the IS in Harris, that's yeah. uh, kind of that's kind of a diamond shape. It might be Texas and Pacific. Oh, sure. Yep. Wow. I, I think it is now that you mentioned I can kind of make guess. that out. Yeah. T N P. Yep. Yeah. You're you're thank you, Tim. And so. and on beyond it, over the banner, behind the banner, is that what you're talking about? You see the top of that logo? Yep. Yep. Yeah. That looks like a T and P. Yeah, that's yep. what I was saying. Oh, okay. I was thinking of the one that's underneath the the lettering for the for the road name. <laughs> oh, there's something there's I, something else there. Yep. But yeah. It does look like a just two letters, so T and P would be Well, maybe that's all it is. T and P. Ah, yeah. so we got Santa Fe and T and P. Hauling Christmas trees into oh. L.A. Wonder if they came out of the yeah. mountains of New Mexico, Arizona, Arizona, perhaps. Yeah. Yep. So maybe New Mexico. Yeah. Here we are. This is in Charleston, Massachusetts. A very early uh, photo based on on the truck down here and its headlights, and of course Dobbin and and the wagon. I, I love how they're throwing the extra trees up on top of those handy refrigerator car as they're starting to sort and unload. <laughs> so, yep. so. And that's an SP refrigerator car. Yep. And then we got, you know, Frisco boxcar over here and this string of boxcars on the other side of the team track area. I've got several photos from this, this loading spot. Here's another one. And this is a main, um, main central Looks like a stock car without a roof. And this is what they, Main Central had a, some of these cars, they were pulpwood cars for hauling pulpwood into the various wood factory, you know, paper mills in the Maine and Northern Vermont, New Hampshire area. That so we got a. Have you noticed how. Reporting mark doesn't look like MEC though. The end. On the end? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it looks like an M. Oh yeah, you're right. It is. It is. Well, they're the only ones that I knew of that had open top cars that looked like stock cars. It, even with you know with the sliding door on the side, but you know, the, notice the cobblestone, you know, team track, uh, the mid seven thirties Ford here with the rack on it for 
And this guy is loading every tree he can on top of that truck. Have you noticed how all these trees appear to be in bundles of four or five or they're all in a row? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, there's some there's some mechanization <clears throat> going on at the loading place or where they're cut. You know, I, I think, I, yeah, I, to make it easier to handle them. Yes. Yeah. And it just brings to mind how early was commercialized Christmas tree farming? Well, the earliest photos I got are from about the 1890s, if that helps. So we'll go okay. through and see. Yeah. Doug, nice. can you go back one? Sure. Is Am I seeing three different ties across the posts? That's what I've been looking at all these sticks on the flat cars. I was trying to figure out how they were tying them up there between the posts. It ah, looks like. It there's looks a wire. Like yeah, it looks like two there. I didn't know if. Yeah, that's you'd very, typical, very typical for lumber loading. They would just stick a post in or a, a stick of wood. And then once they had the load on, they would just wrap wire around and tighten it up. Similar to like, the, you know, if you're shipping tractors on a flat car, they just use wire because that was a throwaway disposable product. You didn't have to worry about collecting the chains or the ropes or. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and they'd twist it until it was tight. So start looking at lumber loads, et cetera, and you'll you'll start seeing that little detail. So, but but notice the rope laying here on the roof of this cab. So this truck driver's got rope to tie his load down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And I love the canvas laying over the, or the you no know, maybe they're chore coats, laying over the hood there. The horses, of course, are blanketed up, so it must be a cold day. Were those 36 foot box cars on the right? Probably let's let me go back. Probably so. Yep, they sure look short. Yeah. They're double sheathed with wood ends. So they're certainly prior to World War One vintage. You know, Clark is our boxcar expert, so. But I know he'll tell me that he models 1953, so anything before or after is of not concern. <laughs> anyway, moving on here. Here is the same location. Look at the flat cars and notice the first one has got fox, fox trucks under it. So. And the uh, box the the tall skinny trees. Mm -hmm. Here's another shot. This is a Bangor and Arusta flat car here with the arch bar trucks. Yep, yep. And this is a main central with the Fox trucks. And then we got a fish belly truck down here at the other end. So those trees are really wrapped tight. I yep. Yes, I agree with you. So wow. That's so they can stack them and bundle them. Here's here's some close-ups of the end of a flat car. Um, two different two different shots, and you can see they're not. These are small trees, and the the limbs are really pulled in tight. To look how closely they're stacked together. Hundreds of them. Yeah. Yep. Ah. Yep. So. And here, of course, here you can see those guys picking up a bundle. He's got what five stumps in his hand there, all in one. At least, at least. Yeah. So obviously, that's how they were packing and shipping them at that time. This, of course, you is know, in Boston, Quincy Market. But Charlestown is where the Boston Navy Yard is. I just wonder if these came in from Canada or something up by sea. Great. And then loaded on the flat cars? Yeah, I don't know. It's just a thought. Well, you know, it's it's a possibility. I, you know, why would a banger and a roost duck and a main central car? I mean, yeah, they would be in Boston, but I was I would assume that these had come down by rail, and it could be this just was a large loading flat area where they could unload and load trucks. Yeah. So, hmm. 
And then here you can see where they're starting to set up at the marketplaces. Those are some big trees. They are tall trees. I know that's yes, what they are. Those Victorian homes had big parlors. <laughs> so. uh, that that's a pretty tall uh, ceiling there. Yeah. <laughs> now here's now here's a famous spot in in downtown Boston, and look at those trees stacked up. Some of them reaching well beyond the overhang awning. So, I'll take the car in the lower right. Yeah. <laughs> Now here, here we got just a, a Canadian Pacific boxcar stacked up with trees. Again, look at how small those trunks are and how tightly packed they are in there. I do not know the location there. Here we are where we're loading. There's another flat car where the Ontario, they've got a little platform where they're throwing the tree up there and then the guy standing here is throwing it up on the bundle on top. And here we got a couple guys inside the boxcar working with individual trees which that's unusual and i don't i can't i don't know what that sign says up on the ceiling of the boxcar i may have to pull that that photo out and look at it closer but this is um new york central and hudson river or, or hudson road this is their station in New York City and the, and the tree lot there where the trees have come in and you know, I love these early horse-drawn wagons with the New York Central and Hudson that's just a and then this is on the New York Ontario and Western and this is their freight yard of Weehawken and look at all these cars of flat cars of Christmas trees that have been brought in here no doubt for the um, New York market. And here we got the West Shore Railroad and New York, Ontario and, and Western Railroad Terminal right on, the, probably right on the um, river there at, at Weehawken. So these are probably trees that came out of Pennsylvania and New York State, Northern New Jersey. <clears throat> and this is, um, this one says this is trees shipped down from the Maine woods, copyright 1915. Here's a horse drawn wagon coming in here. Um, and it looks like it looks like Fox trucks under that box car. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Agree. Yeah. So now let's go to a little bit different movement of trees. Oops. I'm not sure where this was taken. But here we got the kitties riding in the in the open box car, and their Christmas tree is laying on the flat car. Yes, inch and a half. Yeah, isn't that just a? So there are, there are modern operations, tourist railroad operations that are they have access to a Christmas tree farm, or they they are running the Christmas tree specials. Go out and pick your tree out and chop it down. Here we are. This is on the, at the Strasburg Railroad. And they got their mom pop flat car. They're loading up trees that have been selected by customers. And here we are chugging back to the station with a load of trees, probably followed by several coaches full of families. This is on the Durango and Silverton. And they run a similar tree. Go pick out your tree. We'll load it in the box car. You can ride the train back to to Durango, um, and here is a flat car. This is in, in Durango itself, a flat car with some Christmas trees on it, the Christmas tree and, train, it says, and they've and reloaded it. Pre-decorated pre the... with soot. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The Polar Express lettering on the, on the um, tender there, so. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I have stood on this corner where this guy's holding a stop sign. I've been, was just there this last fall. So oh, we're moving ahead. So anyway, um, and of course, sometimes the crew members themselves getting to harvest a Christmas tree and hauling it home. Uh, this, this, um, the companies in Toltec posted this photo on their, their website here recently of a real grand caboose with a Christmas tree or two tied up on the on the top of the caboose, isn't that? 
I just, yeah. So now we get into some really big trees. This is 1955, where a Christmas tree is, I don't know if it's being loaded or unloaded at the UP Omaha station. Yeah. Out of an indoor box car or baggage car. I so, bet I'll load it. That's. I would also agree that it's unloaded. That's oh, yeah. probably, that's probably the city's Christmas tree. The city's or, or the, maybe even the depot. That's that's yeah. the depot's tree. Yeah. Right. They had it all. Because that Union Station in Omaha is a pretty good sized building. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now, now this one clearly says it's going to President Eisenhower for the National Christmas Tree coming out of Oregon. Uh, and it's even got a look at the shipping courtesy of the different roads that are going to handle this tree. And it's long enough they had to get a trailer flat car, trailer train flat car for it. Hmm. <laughs> Look at the bundling on that tree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, every which way. Well, when you, you, when you consider how big those things are, I, you know, you, this, you just can't get your arms around it to wrap it with something. So, oh. One, yeah. one thing I noticed on those Christmas trees on top of the caboose, they were shaped so that the trunk was going first. Yep. So the wind wouldn't mess it up. I wonder if this requires special handling. I wonder yeah. if uh, the big one required special handling to make sure the truck was always up towards the front of the uh, train. Well, oh, notice okay. where the notice where the switcher is. That's very possible. That's a good point. So let's let's look at some more photos. Don't don't ignore the sports coat of the guy standing next to Santa. <laughs> <laughs> you can't ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> That's only because, Lester, you remember having one hanging in your closet like that. No, not me. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh -uh. <clears throat> Those were the politician coats. Oh, okay. So, Those well, are like one. no banners on the politician yeah. uh, buttons, etc. Yeah, now here's one. This says this is the White House of Christmas Tree in 1962. It's going through Ottumwa, Iowa, would be on the CB and Q. And we've got a, a Rayo Grand flat car there with tarp covering something, but the I can't quite make out what car the tree the tree itself is riding on. But the uh, flat car looks like it's functioning as an idler to handle the end of the tree. And then here we've got, uh, this is an MP wood chip car. It says it's got a capital Christmas tree in 1989. So I don't know if that's going to, you know, Washington State Capitol or if it's going to the Capitol in D.C. Or, or what. But it's interesting. You can see this tree has had some bracing to hold up its trunk as it gets laid into this wood chip car. And it's sure. been bundled somewhat, but it's not wrapped. And of course, these guys have got some good guy ropes as they're dropping into this car. So. And of course, we get into other special Christmas um, railroad excursions. This is a Disney Christmas Carol uh, train um, shot by shot by Dick Tinder, who was my um, high school math and physics teacher. I remember just, him from the old Rock Island Technical Society. Yep, yep. Just just saw Dick at the grocery store today. So, but oh, yeah, he's he, still around. Oh yeah, yeah. He comes over to the layout every once in a while. He's still pretty. He he's only about seven eight years older than I am. <laughs> so, he was fairly new as a high school teacher when I sat him. So, but yeah. Now here, this is an interesting. It's Christmas related railroad. We got a load of Arkansas coal for the needy that was shipped via the Frisco into St. Louis. And look at all the brand new coal buckets. And the guys in uniform with their shovels and all the dignitaries and their, they weren't gonna get any coal dust on those jackets, but. <laughs> and then the 
local city ice and fuel companies providing free delivery for delivering buckets of coal or I can't remember what these were called. Apparently nobody's what? old enough to remember them. Scotland? What's that, the buckets? Yeah. Scotland? Well, they were just on the on the farm. They were used a lot for silage, et cetera. I remember for cattle, but I, I don't remember them having other names than a bucket, you know. I yeah. mean, Would that be a scuttle? A scut I, I, yeah. I think I think it was a scut in the in the a Christmas carol in the book. Dickens refers to a scut of coal. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Hansky, you amaze me. Looks like a tub. <laughs> I got lots of useless information brought, rattling around inside my head. Well, yes. <laughs> well, let's let's see if you can help with this next one then. Here we got a an armor reefer loaded with Christmas turkeys. These are coming out of the armor facility up in Fargo, North Dakota. It says from Armory Creameries, but they had a packing plant up there. Um, so, you know, again, the railroad was shipping not only our trees, but our dinner. Oh, and there's of course, less Christmas. Nestmen. What was, what was that? There's less Nestman on the right or the left. Yes, yes. <laughs> By golly, I thought turkeys could fly. <laughs> And of course, we also have the Christmas mail. Here we see, I think this shot's down in the Los Angeles area where they're loading Santa Fe refrigerator cars with excess um, mail. Mm -hmm. You can see all the bags that's, of mail stacked up there. That's yeah. a new one. Mm -hmm. And oh. of course, this is a an M and St. L shot at Albert Lee where they're loading the Christmas mail in 1938. So. You know, just baggage carts full of boxes and bundles. Of... Mm -hmm. And of course, this is 38. So this is after they'd switched everything over to doodle bugs. So we've got an actual passenger train here because of all the, probably all the mail traffic. So moving on, this was an ad I came across here just recently. Great Northern advertising, uh, you know, their shipment of Christmas trees. And you can see they're tossing them into a gun and a fellow there with his ax ready to chop it down for you. So, and here's another one. This is Christmas greetings from the Lakeshore in Michigan Southern, 1898. We're gonna move into, I uh, found the railroad Christmas cards and greetings, et cetera. So a nice, nice shot there with the horses and the sleigh. This is the Christmas menu at the headquarters for the Military Railway, Railway Service that was based at Fort Snelling, Minnesota in 1942. I was not aware that Fort Snelling hosted a military railway service. So. Uh, uh, I'm not either and I live here and I've been there many <laughs> times. Yeah. Awesome. You know yeah. What? I'm going to have to. It's 1942 for maybe it was just during the war. So, but it looks like they had a pretty nice menu. Boy. First, now we get Christmas cards. Here's one from the Pullman Company in 1926. This is Chicago Northwestern in 1929, 1930. Here's an Alaska Railroad Christmas card, 1944. Notice the polar bear and the moose and the caribou. So, this is the inside of a Santa Fe Christmas card in 43. This is a Chessie ad for Christmas where Santa's pouring out milk for Chessie and her kittens. That's pretty neat. Here's a, um, this is a cb and would Christmas card or poster. Here's another cb and would card from the 20s. And this is the interior or the, the rear of that card, must have been a postcard, but that's the greetings. 
Here's the Chicago Great Western. I'm going to say probably from the from the 30s, but I'm not sure. Now here's the cover. The Chicago Northwestern apparently did um, a series of Christmas cards with different depots on the cover. This is Council Bluffs. This is Morrison, um, Illinois. This is Waukesha, Wisconsin. So maybe they gave them out in the departments in the states that they had photo, you know, had the station photo, but Gil Reed, I think, did them all. Yep, they're all Gil Reeds. He did a lot for the Milwaukee as well. But here's the, here's the interior, what one of those cards would have read. So. And of course, we got Santa picking up mail from the Frisco. And this one uh, really intrigued me. This is 1903 from the Frisco System magazine. But this would have been a, a cover or a, an ad in their company employee magazine, which was interesting. The wise men finally wising up and taking the train. <laughs> This is an Illinois Central Christmas greeting. This is a L and N, nineteen twenty eight, with all the all the Christmas greetings and you know terms and of course Santa's wearing his conductor's hat because he's on the L and N at the moment. So this is the cover of a Minneapolis and St. Louis Christmas card. Um, and this is what it was an in, inside. This is a, a scam from eBay. And then even the um, corner of the envelope with the Merry Christmas and the little engineer with his oiler, oil can. This is a season's greeting from Lucian Sprague for the M and St. L. And here's an L and N magazine cover for 1964, with a lineup of probably their newest locomotives. And this, of course, General Motors had to get involved. The Electromotive Division sent on the old-fashioned caboose and the new aero train going right by in 1956. And then here we got a Canadian national promoting Christmas gifts. Buy a gift certificate to ride the Canadian national. What could be a better present? <laughs> if only we could get one today, right? And of course, here's Penzi, Santa and the conductor. 47 kind of, there. Now would be viewed as kind of creepy having people peeking in on a sleeping kid. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back then, it would have been thought cute. Today, it would be, ooh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I could just see the company lawyers going, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, That's right. Here's, here's another. Here's a beautiful one from Fog, a Rock yeah. Island Christmas scene for their Christmas card, 1958. And would the Rock Island have paid for that? Well, would they... I would assume so. I think uh, he, he, by 1958, all of those uh, northerns had been retired. <laughs> well, ah. also, also, he's if he's receiving money from the Rock Island. Notice how he snuck in a Chicago Northwestern boxcar uh, on the in the right. Yep. Oh, well, there's yeah. a PFE Reaper on there too. Well, yeah, that's yeah. But but a, a, a PFE is sort of non-denominational compared to Northwestern boxcar. <laughs> Well, maybe. maybe he knew something about the end of the Rock Island we didn't. Uh, you know, I... uh, this, this is uh, Christmas nostalgia. Yes. Looking back. Well, let's let's go back. Here's 1939 Rock Island. Mm -hmm. So with the new streamliner, you know, what is that? An, it's an, an E6. E5 or something. That's an E6. Only only Burlington had E5s. Okay. Well, it could be a TA. Um, didn't uh, Rock have TAs? Yes, but I, it looks like that's got uh, 
an E unit truck under the under the cab. Yeah. You know, judging by where the, the the ladder is. Well, I guess the other question is when did the um rock and the, island and acquire? Now that's the 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 locomotive on the right. That's a TA because there's a little window behind the cab ladder. Mm hmm. Yes. So obviously the Rock Island is promoting their newest diesel locomotives uh, on this Christmas card. So, and this is the inside of that particular card. And notice we've got the uh, the printed names of various individuals and someone's handwritten their name in so they wouldn't be forgotten. And I, I've got a another scan I think of the same card without all these names. So obviously it printed up different ones for different divisions or departments or something. So or it was bad proofreading. Yeah. Or uh, it was a new promotion. Yep. So here's another Rock Island Christmas card. I don't know the date of this one. Um, here's an another ad for Pullman. Uh, so Christmas only comes once a year, promoting, you know, encouraging you to travel to see the relatives. This is from 1940, just prior to the war. And here we got a Union Pacific by more war bonds. So this is during the war. So and then here's a Pullman one, the precious Christmas cargo. This is sometime after the war. Look at the little boy in the, in the uniform, in an army uniform. Yeah, yeah. Of course, New York Central promoting all their different um, great passenger trains. This one's 1949. So encouraging people to come back and ride the trains. <laughs> this is a city of San Francisco. We got General Motors ad here for promoting the, the new streamlined joint operations of the UP, Northwestern, and SP. Well, that's a magazine cover. Yeah, railway age cover, so. And then here's a, another New York Central. You can get a good night sleeping in their sleepers. Yet another New York Central. <laughs> And yet another New York Central apparently ran a series of these ads. Canadian National Christmas Card. New Haven Railroad. Western Pacific. <laughs> Makes you believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> Southern Railway. They're going to handle you, your parcels, and your gifts, so. And here's your gifts, British Railways greeting cards with railway tickets for the family reunion will be welcomed. Oh, this is Southern Railway, is this, this is the British Southern Railway? Yep. Yes, it is, I'm looking at the engines now. And the fares are all in pounds. Yep. <laughs> at the bottom, it says a manager, London Bridge Station. I traffic see that. manager. Yep. <laughs> there we got a Union Pacific 53 highlighting yeah. their name trains. And this one from Ward Kimball, 1942. Ward was a contemporary Walt Disney, worked for him for years. And I love this. It's still a Merry Christmas as the kids are fighting over who's going to get the toy train. <laughs> And of course, Ward was known for his Grizzly Flats Railroad that he he had in his backyard. Mm. Yep. And of course, most of us today, we are now familiar with the holiday trains, the Canadian Pacific. Yep. And Canadian National trying to horn in on that. Oh. The Tweetsie has run, runs theirs. And of course, the Santa train from the Clinchfield now CSX. And 
wave goodbye to Santa because that's it. We're done. <laughs> hey, Doug. Um, yes. Would you please send me that one of that Fort Snelling one? Sure, I can do that, Les. Well, I would appreciate. Do a little, uh, see if we can find out over at the museum or the historical society. There's more. I'd never heard of a railway over there or anything. Yeah, it's a, uh, you know, when I found that first photo, I just got curious as to what, you know, could I find? And I just kept finding photos with the Christmas trees and they're being shipped on railroads. And then the Christmas cards also just kept pop, pop, popping up every once in a while. You do a search on the internet, more stuff pops up. And I, I noticed this year on Facebook, a lot of train folks were using old railroad Christmas cards to send greetings during December. <laughs> I saw several of them pop up that way. So, but most people have never thought about the railroad handling that that commodity, you know, and the seasonal seasonalness of it. Basically, October, November um, shipping. Now I'm waiting for Mon to come up with a good truck loaded with Christmas trees at the next RPM. <laughs> <laughs> Did the Monon ship any Christmas trees, Mont? You're muted. Mont, you're muted. I'm muted. Oh, yeah, that's the first there time. Are. Uh, they are, uh, no, the Monon did not, but I'll fix you up with uh, uh, my version of Christmas tree. It <laughs> <That> sounds <laughs> ominous. <laughs> hey, uh, Doug, yes. I've got uh, five pictures of uh, Rock Island uh, Christmas cards, 1937, 1939, 1940, 41, and uh, 1938 as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not something I really made a hobby of collecting, but as I've collected <laughs> collecting photos, some of these things keep popping up and it kind of makes it, it's a fun presentation to do in the late fall Christmas season as we're, you know, we're thinking about, it. but even now, you know, for modelers, now you can get busy, collect a few flat, flat cars and guns, figure out how to build that conveyor, you know, and how uh, you're modeling uh, well, the it, trees it, right it, now. It's still a timely uh, 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 <coughs> project, uh, Doug, because now the credit card bills have just arrived. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> to remind us of the Christmas tree we bought last yeah, <laughs> we're reliving the experience. You know, we used to uh, see truckloads of Christmas trees when we in Wisconsin when we would come back or go to train fest in November, mm. early November. Oh. Yeah, so I haven't seen any in a while. There was very few Christmas trees around this year. I think that the artificials are taking over. Oh, I hear we. Yep. The, well, the thing is, the Christmas tree is getting pricey. Remember the days you could buy a, uh, a decent tree for 10, then it was 20. This year, the average price of a Christmas tree is about, for a, let's say, a, what we considered a good tree, about 175 bucks. Because yep. some of the, a couple of my neighbors are still very avid about uh, not using artificial, and uh, they were paying in the range of 175. For, uh, these are harvested in northern Minnesota, the trees. If you're looking for something know. like a, a, a good scotch pine or a blue, blue spruce or you know and then the, you get, get into the pricier stuff but there are some real fancy ones you it's big dollars anymore Ugh. so i'm gonna pay to that i want a ball on the bottom so i can put it out in the yard when i'm done <laughs> yeah. oh no no north, I, north. I, i'm sorry my neighbors have always talked about me because my wreath hangs out till end of march usually or start of April when it's just starting to brown. And they've always given me static about how come I haven't put it in the recycle, which we, the last couple of weeks, we've had yard waste going through to pick up trees and wreaths, and et cetera. But I feel if we pay for them, we should display them Christmas year round. <laughs> Up north I, I of Omaha. Tree that my uh, cat won't let me take down. She loves sitting underneath that tree. <laughs> <laughs> to say north of Omaha, we have the drought. I know five or six people who own tree farms. All of the five combined probably didn't sell more than 20 trees total. Wow. Because there's really, 
yeah, there's just, uh, they made no money this year. They lost a lot of trees they planted last year. Hmm. So, wow. Remember, I'm sure many of you remember uh, having the experience, I, which I did, where you hike a couple miles to sometimes cut a yeah. Christmas tree at some tree farm, miserable to lay in the snow with a saw to cut the tree off. Uh, I'm sure many of you did that in your day. Yeah, we did yes, that. Yes, I have. I, I have a memory of as a little bitty kid going out into the back pasture and finding a scrub cedar in the fence line, <laughs> which was a terrible Christmas tree, but that's all we had. <laughs> yeah. But... But yeah, early on in the married life, we went out to, we had a church member several times. We had a church member who owned a Christmas tree farm. So we would, you know, cater to the local merchants and we would go out and buy a Christmas tree off of that farm and cut it down and haul it home. So I have a, I have a bald Christmas tree I planted in the front yard and it's now 70 feet high. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, they were selling the small trees some years you could buy them. Uh, at some of the nurseries where they were literally about a foot tall pound, uh, planted, and mm -hmm. they would say, go out and plant the trees. Uh, I know I got one for a Christmas present one year from one of the grandkids. Yep. I know some of the nurseries around central Iowa were promoting buying a live tree that was bald in, a, in some sort of a container that you could plant, you know, after some time after the holidays when the weather warmed up something yeah so or they they would you could take it back after the holidays and they would keep it in their greenhouse for you until you were ready to plant it yeah. mm. so well when you talk about the trees too in the other parts here in minnesota was it last year or year before they wanted special packaging they didn't want the trees just uh put in uh, yard waste because of of uh, I don't know if it was insects. I can't ex exactly remember. Do any of you, did that happen where, you know, in the other states where they were asking for special handling of the Christmas tree if you had a live one for disposal or wreaths? No, but I've heard of uh, dumping them in the lake because they make good structure for fish. Yep. Yeah. Uh, DNR in Minnesota says that's a no, no, no one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't allow that. They will find you if they catch you doing it. Well, a lot of trees are spray painted green to make them look nicer. So I suspect that's not real healthy for the aquatic yeah. life. Right. The the paint and the flocking and the other things they do. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised that there's some fungus and some bugs. Because I, I remember years ago, a doctor telling me, because I always came down with sinus infection after Christmas. And he said, you're probably not allergic to the Christmas tree, but you're allergic to all the stuff that's coming in the house on the tree. Okay. And so that's when we switched, we switched to our official tree at that time. And that cut down the, the infections for me. But mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you think about the dust, the pollens, the various other things that float through the air or get sprayed on the tree by various critters and you bring it into your house. And <laughs> so. Yeah, I've I've never had a live tree. My older sister is allergic to pine, so we okay. never had one. And I thought living out in Chicago that trees came in with the Coast Guard. Ah, <laughs> yes, I, I I do have a photo of a of a, a boat unloading Christmas trees in the Chicago area, hmm. and it was famous as a Christmas tree boat that would come down from I I think. Probably down make Lake Michigan from Upper Wisconsin or something. They I think that it, was they do it every year. I think that was the Rouse, uh, the, at which they found the wreckage of, of it. Uh, it was taking trees to Chicago, and the, the entire deck was covered with trees. An ice storm hit, and suddenly the the uh, ship was overweight and it sunk. That was I think around World War One or so. And for years, Christmas trees would be washing up on shore from that. Hmm. But they would tie up on a deck on a dock in Chicago and sell trees from the boat. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Very good. Well, thank you, Doug. Uh, that was a wonderful presentation. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, next week we have uh, Jared Harper is going to uh, give a presentation on his layout. That is uh, the Alma branch, which is nearing completion. 
Uh, I believe he gave that presentation in Cocoa Beach, but for those of us who were not there, uh, that'll be uh, that'll be next week. And then on Saturday at 10 a.m. Central, 11 o'clock Eastern, we will have George Toman doing uh, the, the clinic that he did at Naperville on uh, brass and metal parts and etching and, and all that. So that promises to be good as well. And I'll send that link out on uh, on Friday sometime tomorrow to everybody in case you want to join us for that. That'll be on our website as well once it's done. So uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. And yep. we'll see you next week. See you guys. Right. Or Saturday. All right. All right. <laughs>